Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing my Sephora VIB sale part two because I ordered more. Anyways, if you would like to see part one, I would suggest you see that first. I will put it down below, but if you would like to see what I picked up, then just keep watching. <laughs> So for those of you asking, I did pick up the Huda Beauty Nude Palette. I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a short review at the end of this video because there's so many reviews and videos up on it. I'm not doing a whole separate video, but I will spend a little extra time explaining that product, explaining my experience with it. But anyways, I'm going to get into the products that I bought first. This time around, I picked up a lot more skincare and hair products. The last haul I did, I picked up a lot of makeup products. This is still fun. This stuff is completely necessary so if you're more interested in my skincare and my hair products this is more of a video for you anyways I'm gonna throw in something really fast that I picked up you can't get this at Sephora but this is the Dior skin nude air luminizer I picked this up at Bloomingdale's Mel Thompson loves this and I've been wanting to pick this up I've had a recent obsession with Dior products I just think they're so fabulous especially their base products so this is the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer in the shade Hollow Pink. This is supposed to be Mel Thompson's favorite. I haven't tested it out. I've only swatched it. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that is. Look at that embossment. I haven't put it on my face yet, so I can't tell you. I really quickly did want to throw in that I picked up this product. All right, so now to what I actually picked up. I did pick up one makeup product besides the Huda palette. This is the Sephora Colorful Shadow and Liner in the shade My Boyfriend's Jeans. And I love this product so much for adding color to my waterline. I always use a white and I always use a nude, but I haven't picked up a colored one before. And look at this. I just think this is going to be so beautiful for a lot of colorful looks that I'm doing. This is only 11 or $12. I just kind of picked it up at the end of my order and yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this is going to be a really nice addition to my collection. These are super good, by the way. They're really soft, they're really creamy, they're very pigmented, and they last relatively long for what they are on your waterline, and they look super good with a lot of different colorful looks because they have so many different colors. I do recommend picking up their nude ones, though. I use that all the time in my everyday makeup routine. I don't really talk about it that much, but I use it all the time. All right, so I first got a shampoo and conditioner set from Briogeo. These are the Be Gentle, Be Kind. So the shampoo is is matcha and apple replenishing and the conditioner is kale and apple replenishing now I don't always invest in expensive hair care products a lot of times I just buy those giant Tresemme hair bottles for like five dollars because I have so much hair I go through little expensive bottles like these so fast to the point where it's not really worth it I just spend so much money on hair care products but of course they were 20% off and I do like to splurge every now and then so the shampoo is a nutrient rich green juice inspired shampoo for dull and parched hair that harnesses the power of fruits and vegetables to support healthy looking hair and scalp very important i have very dry hair because my hair has curls so the oil has problems reaching down to my ends so my hair is always very dry so i always like to look for replenishing rejuvenating moisturizing hair care products and it says the apple replenishing superfood conditioner is a green juice inspired smoothie textured conditioner Bub. Okay, so it's literally the same thing as this, obviously, but <laughs> I picked those up. I'm pretty excited about those. I also picked up the original Orlaplex Hair Perfector. This repairs and strengthens all hair types. It says, use it before shampooing. It is not a conditioner. It is a bond builder. Um, so you use it one time per week, and then on damaged hair, you can use it two to three times per week. It smells all right. By the way, the shampoo... Oh my god, the conditioner and shampoo smell super fantastic. I can't wait for my head to smell like these. Like, those. But I mean, yeah, I've used this one so far, and I really like it. I really think it's important to moisturize and condition your hair. I do put heat products in my hair a lot. Like I said, my hair is very dry anyways, so I'm always looking for some good conditioning products. And so far, I like this. I'm definitely going to have to give it a few more goes, but you guys know I have long, gross hair, so... We will see how that goes. Skincare. So I picked up the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow. 
This is a night serum that resurfaces skin for a smoother, youthful looking, glowing complexion. I've been quite intrigued by the pharmacy brand lately. I've just tried a few products and I've thoroughly enjoyed them. So I did want to pick this up. I love night serums and like overnight treatments. I just really think they really do get in the skin and moisturize and just makes me feel really good. So I'm really excited to try this out that doesn't smell like anything. So, like I said, I've been very interested in pharmacy lately, so I also picked up the Mighty's kit. So it comes with three things, like a little tiny sample. So the first thing it has is the Honey Drop Lightweight Moisturizer. The packaging is so cute and earthy. I will say, these products, like, they don't smell very nice. They smell very organic and earthy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, they, I also got the Sleep Tight Firming Night Balm in the kit. I've been... This one smells like herby, minty, I don't know. But again, kind of same packaging idea. And then it also comes with the Honey Potion, which is a renewing antioxidant hydration max mask mask i cannot talk today which is a hydration mask super duper cute set i love face masks i really like i really like the way this brand markets itself really cute packaging so far everything i've tried from this brand i feel like has been absolutely fantastic hence why i just purchased a lot of their stuff i like to change up my skincare every few months just because my skin does get tired of skincare and then i do start to break out so it's always very good for me to change up my skincare routine so i'm so excited to see how this will do oh also there is one more thing in this kit this is the green clean little makeup remover thingy i have a whole pot of this and i am so in love with this this is what got me onto the brand pharmacy so this is like a good little travel thingy that i can use so yeah if you're gonna try one thing from the brand though i definitely recommend this green clean like makeup remover you it's like a balm and you put it all over your skin and it literally removes all your makeup better than any other makeup remover it's a little messy but it's such a cool amazing awesome product so, but anyways, let's now get into the nude Huda Beauty palette. I'm going to give you some of my opinions on it and what I'm thinking so far. I have only used it once. I used it on this look. If you're curious as to how I did this look, I'm going to be uploading the tutorial on my Instagram at Morgan Turner Makeup. If it's not up there, it will be there soon, so don't worry. So make sure you follow me so that you can see the tutorial but basically do you, i mean you guys have probably seen this palette everywhere i'm not going to go too much into depth about the packaging but i think it's really awesome that she had this in the 20 percent off sale and i just was so intrigued by this palette because all the pictures it just looked so different i've never seen a palette with these shimmers that looked like that and it's true it really does look like this in person which is absolutely insane to me i couldn't wait to get my hands on this yeah i actually haven't even watched a single tutorial on this palette i just kind of bought it because i just since i knew i was gonna buy it i was like why am i gonna even watch a tutorial but um yeah it comes with this concealer shade down here i'm actually not too crazy about that and i blew the wrong way and it got the powder stuck on here so you of course got to make sure you like blow it away from the concealer i used it today i don't really i thought it was kind of weird <laughs> but anyways other than that i really love how this palette comes with so many different finishes to it beautiful shimmers a couple of glitters and then a lot of mattes and then there's a satin in here too so you're getting a really good range of different textures and i have to say huda oh my gosh if i i think it's pronounced huda but i always pronounce it huda so i'm just I'm going to call it Huda. Um, I always talk about how much I love the ABH, the way that they arrange their palettes. They just have like a vision and they really tell beautiful color stories. I actually like Huda Beauties more. All of her palettes I've totally been super inspired by. The way they're laid out, their color themes, everything about their palettes I've been so in love with. I don't think there's another brand that arranges palettes better than Huda Beauty. But that's just my personal opinion. And all of them are so pretty, so aesthetic -y love them now 
with this palette, I will say everything's kind of in the same tone, same depth. This palette most definitely lacks depth. The only type of variety you're getting in this palette is within the textures. Other than that, this definitely lacks depth. So all the looks you're going to create are basically going to look the same. I mean, seriously, there's been a million different looks created with this and there's not much difference between any of them. Some of them are more glittery than others, but I mean, if you're looking to get the super crazy unique look from everybody else, you're really not going to with this palette. But personally, I'm okay with that just because I love this color scheme. This color story right here is me. I love it. It's glitter. These are the tones that I love. Every look that I create with this palette, I am going to love. Formulation-wise, I haven't had any problems so far. Like I said, I've only created this look, but... I will say I did use this color Daydream right here and I was a little bit, I just felt like it lacked a color base. It's more of like a glitter topper. It's in the center of my lid right now and it looks absolutely stunning but I was expecting it to have more of a stronger base color. I'm not really complaining but that's just something that I noticed. Um, if her glitter formula is different from the glitter formula in her last palette, I really can't speak on it but I will say usually these I don't have much problems with just put down a glitter glue and then put that glitter on top I imagine it's going to be fine I really like palettes that incorporate pressed glitters I just feel like it adds a lot of dimension to the look it makes the palette more unique and I think more brands need to do stuff like that from the few mattes that I played with I played with this one this one this one this one and this one but I mean I didn't have any type of issues with it to be honest I didn't notice anything exceptional about the blending but I still thought it was very good. I didn't have any issues. This color bare, I wasn't too crazy about. It pulled very pink on my skin because I used it to set my underbrow concealer and I just didn't like the way it looked, but that's a personal problem. I think if you're more dark than me, you will have a better time with that shadow. But I mean, yeah, other than that, I really love this palette. I love this color story. This is a palette I definitely will create so many pretty looks with. They're all going to kind of look the same, but I'm going to love every look I create just because this is my color story. If this isn't your color story, you're not going to like it because you can only get one or two different looks with it. Also, the name Nude is not very nude. She said this was her interpretations of nude, but like, it's a pink palette. It's a pinky lavender palette, so not very nude. When I think of nude, I think of like this color, the shirt that I'm wearing, and maybe some more peach tones. So her nude is pink. Um... And then for my nude, I definitely think more like skin tone, peachy. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that. But regardless of this, whether or not this is nude, this is really pretty. I honestly, I really love it. But there are some downsides to it for sure. It lacks depth. It's not really nude. But I don't know. I think Huda is very clever with her palettes. I find them to be quite unique. Honestly, just like I've never seen a palette that had looked like this with these finishes in the pan even if they look like regular shimmers on the lid they're so pretty to look at and I dig this palette honestly I love the colors in it so I don't really have anything <laughs> to complain about um anyway so that was my little opinion on the Huda nude palette of course if it ever changes I will let you guys know if like, you don't hear me say anything about it ever again that means I liked it, in my opinion. Stay true. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. Remember to subscribe to my channel, comment down below, like this video, blah, blah, blah. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.